so this happened around two years ago when I was 14. For some context, I live in England. I'm a female, and it was around 9 o'clock in the winter. So it was dark by now, and my friend who I'll call Rosie for the story and I were leaving from a day out in London. We got into the bus and everything seemed normal, and we were just laughing and joking around. When we were on the bus, I had noticed a man who looked around 18. He was quite short and he was standing up because the bus was busy, and he was staring at Rosie and I, but we just decided to ignore it, and over time, the bus got emptier and emptier. It was finally our stop, and we pressed the button to notify the driver to stop letting him know that we're getting off. As we stood up, the guy did as well, and I kind of had an unsettling feeling. However, I just decided to ignore it, and I told myself that I was just being paranoid. When we got off the bus, we had started walking towards my house as Rosie was having a sleepover, and the creepy man just walked in the other direction. I was really so relieved because this whole time I thought he was going to follow us home. However, my relief was soon filled with dread when Rosie then looked at him and he noticed. I don't know what switched in his head, but he turned around and then started walking towards us. We carried on walking and I still just tried to tell myself that I was just being paranoid because, well, I really didn't expect anything like this to happen to us. Rosie, who I thought was just being dramatic and I thought she was trying to scare me, then started running. But I ignored her, and I just bent down to tie my shoelace. I turned around after I finished, and I saw the man running right towards me. He was less than a meter away from me, and I don't think I've ever run so fast in my life. I sprinted to my house, and just my luck, I forgot my house keys. I banged on my front door, just praying that my sister or mom would open up the door before it caught up to me. Thankfully, we got inside just as he was about to catch up to us and slammed the door. We told my mom what happened and went outside to check, but he was gone by then. But it was still a scary experience nonetheless. I'd also like to say that the story ended here, but it didn't. A few days later, Rosie and I were going out to meet a guy that I was speaking to, and we saw the man yet again driving on a motorcycle. We decided to ignore it and carried on walking, but when the guy noticed us, he pulled up next to us and then tried talking to us. We ignored it though and we walked past him, but then he pulled up in front of us, then stopping us from walking away from him. In a really creepy voice, he said, Don't worry girls, I'm not gonna hurt you. But that alone was enough to terrify us, and we then ran to the opposite side of the road, thinking that would stop him from getting to us. Luckily we saw the two guys we were meeting up with, then ran up to them and the guy drove away. I really hate to think what would have happened to us if we hadn't ran into those guys when we did. Thank God for them. The following events happened over a year ago, and although some people might not find the following events to even be scary, but when you're the one living them, it's a completely different story. I'm 17 years old, young and dumb, and I'm living a much better life than I was previously. A year ago at 16, I was the typical teenager mixed in with the wrong group of friends. Which is true, but it wasn't a group of friends per se. It was more like an acquaintance who was mixed in with my then friend group, who negatively influenced us into doing some really ridiculous things. We'll call this acquaintance Harry for the sake of the story. I guess it all started when my friend started dating Harry. It seems like the normal relationship. That is, until we got to know a bit more about Harry as an individual. He would go radio silent for hours at a time and would always have these episodes of random anger. He would always blame it all on his ADHD, which we all tried our best to understand. We had only known Harry for two to three months by this point, and his girlfriend, two other girls, myself included, and another boy decided to stay around him for the night as we all spent the day together and we thought it would be fun. And it was. We were drinking, playing music, etc. Until Harry decided to isolate himself from all of us. At this point, this was all typical Harry behavior. 
until he stormed in the room we were all in, grabbed our male friend, and then started attacking him for no reason at all. It was like a switch just flipped off in his head. We all rushed right away to stop what was happening, but Harry was already on top of him, and it really didn't seem like he was going to stop. It actually took threatening to call the police to get him to stop. The night ended there, with the boy being left with some really bad bruises and a black eye. In all honesty, this really should have been the first red flag. It took a week for Harry to apologize, yet again blaming it on his ADHD, which again we all tried to understand. There were also other red flags, like Harry openly degrading all of us, including his girlfriend. He would also be a frequent abuser of drugs, which we didn't really want to become involved in. He would also become really possessive and controlling over small things like his girlfriend, his belongings, and even up to the people that myself and others would want to date. None of us were allowed to have any male crushes or even male friends, because he wanted to be the only male in all of our lives. We had probably known Harry for about five months at this point, and we decided to spend the day out in a small wooded area that was surrounded by a park. It was only Harry, his girlfriend, and I brought my close friend at the time too, so I didn't feel like I was third wheeling, and Harry was acting strange again. He would look at my friend in a really disgusted way, and he would begin shouting at her and calling her names. Looking back, I should have gotten the both of us out of that situation sooner. The four of us had spent the majority of the day out together, and yet again, Harry snapped and became aggressive just like always, and even took this as far as to hit my friend someone he had never even met. He hadn't even formed a proper opinion of her, only knowing her for a day, but he still went that far. I had stopped talking to Harry for a few weeks after that, taking some real offense on behalf of my friend, and even her and I didn't talk much after the previous events, and I can't say I blame her. I then got a random message from Harry that said, Hey, I'm really sorry, but I've apologized to your friend. I want to make things better again, so if you want to come over and talk, feel free to come over at any point. A part of me wanted to believe that Harry really was trying to change and be a better person, but that couldn't have been more further from the truth. I decided to go over for the reasons being that I thought he had changed and that he was trying to be a better person. I arrived at his house at around 11.30 in the morning, and we talked for around three hours about how much he annoyed me and hurt me, and did the same for others. We eventually made up, and I thought we could even be friends again. We even spent some time playing on his PC, until I got up to go to the bathroom, and then I came back, and Harry was just sat there in silence, twiddling his thumbs. He had switched again. I sat down and called his name, but no response. He just turned around to his desk drawer, rumbled around, and then pulled out a switchblade. An actual fucking switchblade. I seriously thought that I was going to die. In that moment I could have cried, but I didn't. I was in shock. He then held it against my stomach, and I lost all hope. I then started crying, and he then began screaming at me, telling me that it's all my fault, and that they're telling him to do it, and how easy it would be to kill me. I really wish that I never would have gone to his house to begin with, and that I never would have had all this trauma to begin with. But shortly after, Harry's dad came into the room, then stopping Harry from possibly killing me. I honestly don't think I would even be here right now if it wasn't for Harry's dad coming into the room that day. I immediately left and blocked Harry on everything. I also decided to distance myself from the group of friends for a while until they did the same thing. Harry and his girlfriend didn't last much longer either, but I really can't say I'm surprised. He ended up eventually moving to the London area, and I didn't really hear much about him for a while. That is, until recently. I found out that Harry got arrested for first degree murder. This crazy fucking psycho actually murdered someone. I can't even begin to describe the amount of guilt, relief, and pain that I felt when I heard that. All I gotta say is Harry, if you're somehow thinking about all the crazy psychotic things you did to me and all those around you, I really hope it eats at you and you fucking rot in prison. Hey 
Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying today's stories. I want to take a small break to thank today's sponsor Raycon for sponsoring today's episode. With Christmas right around the corner, I think we all know it's never too early to start shopping for the holidays. Especially because today, well, you can save big on a gift that they'll use every day. Raycon wireless earbuds. I personally really like Raycon's wireless earbuds for when I go to the gym or even when I'm just chilling in the house. Sometimes I even use them to edit my videos, and they really come in handy. With seamless Bluetooth pairing and a comfortable noise isolating fit, you can start listening right away and just keep listening for hours. The audio quality is amazing, comparable to what you'd get from other premium brands, except Raycon starts at half the price. The new everyday earbuds come with three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening sounds its best, with just the right amount of bass. There's pure mode, which is good for your podcast, blues, instrumentals, etc. Then there's the balance mode, also good for podcasts, rock, heavy metal, some of that kind of stuff. And then if you really want to crank it up, there's bass mode. Raycon offers eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. There's also a built-in mic so you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. So this holiday season, get them something they can use for calls or music, for work or play, at home or on the go, or pick up a pair for yourself. Trust me, you're going to be using them every day. Go to buyraycon.com cannibal today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. But hurry, this offer is only available for a limited time only and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash cannibal to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash cannibal. I was 15 years old when this happened. I live in a flat in East London. It was a Sunday evening and I was home alone while my parents along with my brother and sister were at my aunt's house to stay the night. And me being a teenager, I really enjoyed my solitude, so I decided to stay and study for an exam that was coming up. All of the lights except the TV were off in my sitting room as I was watching TV. It was then that I heard the letter slot opening, which was odd since no mail should be coming as it was Sunday, and it was also very late for mail to be coming at all. So I go to the corridor to have a peek at the door, that's when I notice two white balls in the mail slot. I creep a little closer until I'm about two inches away from the door. It was then that I realized it was a pair of eyes. I immediately jolted back as the guy then noticed me. The man then knocked, saying it was the electrician. Now, I know you may think I'm stupid for this, but... I open the door, seeing a man in a bright yellow jacket, and he asks, Hey, is your mother home? She called an hour ago for me to check the electricity in your home. Stupidly, I then said, Uh, no, I'm actually home alone. And the man suddenly grinned a really disturbing grin as my words entered his ears, and he asked if he could come inside. As I then closed the door to unlock the deadbolt, it was then that I realized my mother had made no calls an hour ago, and that she was at my aunt's house. That sudden realization made my heart drop. The man asked if he could come inside yet again, and I quickly locked the door, saying no. My mom said it's fine. We don't need him. I know he heard the panic in my voice, because right afterwards, he then tried to barge in the door with his shoulder. I honestly thought I was going to die. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, I hear my neighbor screaming, and then footsteps coming away from my door. I look through the hole, and I see my neighbor, Walter. I greet him thanking him for possibly saving my life, and he said he called the police. 20 minutes later, the police arrive, and I gave a description of the guy and what he did. It was two weeks later when I got an update from the police saying the man has been detained and that he's been doing the same exact thing to several other families in the neighborhood. He would look through the door to check if the coast is clear, and then he would slowly pick lock the door and then completely ransack the house. Hearing this made me sick to my stomach, but I'm so relieved that the man didn't succeed in breaking in our home. 
it really could have went so much worse if my neighbor Walter wasn't there when he was. I'm really thankful for him. A little background info. I live in London, England in Brixton, which if you're from London, you'll know you don't want to be there alone at night. Now me and my friend Ants in the story aren't in gangs, but we do sometimes sell drugs. We don't partake in most gang related stuff, but some of our friends are gang members, which I'll get to later in the story. I had just taken a five day trip with my family to the countryside and I had stopped smoking weed for the five days as opposed to every day, so my tolerance was very low. Since I was a kid, 15 or 16 at the time, me and my friend always went around on bikes. I had met my friend in the park to go smoke. At first it was all calm and I got very high, and we stayed there for about an hour just listening to music and trying to find some parties to go to. We found one not too far away from us in a council estate, so it was a big block party. We'd gotten on our bikes, and I also want to mention that I was wearing thousands of pounds worth of clothes. It was only about two minutes into our cycling to the party when we came on this road which had no cars, which was kind of strange since it was a main road, but it was 12.30 at night. We weren't too unnerved by it as usually if other gang members approach us, we'll tell them who we know and who our friends are, and they'll usually just leave us be and know who we're talking about. But this white Mercedes class had screeched its way down the road and slowed down right next to me and rolled down the windows. As I was really high, it took me a few minutes to process it. As I looked at my right, I see five Somali people with face masks, gloves, and also machetes shouting at me to pull over. Now, usually if it's fight or flight, I wouldn't usually flight, as I kind of enjoy the fight, and so does my friend, but I had a feeling I had seen them before, and my instincts despite being high told me to flight. My friend was a little further ahead of me, and I told him to just go, don't look back. The car zoomed down the road right past us and into a side road, where all five of the now masked gang members then jump out of the car and start sprinting. We managed to make it around them as they jumped out a bit late, and at the end of the road, there happened to be an alley that blocked cars from going through. I heard them running after us for a few seconds, and even heard the falling of a knife, and as I looked back, there was a knife that was thrown just meters away from me. We pedaled for our life and got to the alley, but it didn't stop there. We made it down the alley, which I guess these guys knew as they then cut us off. They'd been waiting on the other side for us to come out and then grabbed my friend Dance. I jumped off my bike and threw one of them off, which was enough time for my friend to jump onto his bike and we cycled into a park where we couldn't be followed. We waited behind a nursery at the park and while we were waiting, Ant said that he knew those guys were beefing with one of our closest friends and they must have seen us with them before and thought we were involved. My friend then tells me he thinks he has a cut in his stomach and as the adrenaline was wearing off, he pressed onto his stomach and there was blood all over his hands. Keep in mind it was winter so we had really big jackets and about six layers of clothes and we couldn't really see any blood. It turns out he had been stabbed with a flick knife. We ended up calling an ambulance to take us to the hospital, and they said it didn't hit any vital organs, and within about three or four days, he was right back out. I know who they were and why they wanted us, but trying to kill people they never met, that's something I'll never understand in the London gang culture, or something I'd agree with. We both nearly died. About a week after this, one of them had actually been put in the news for killing one of my friend's friends and is facing a trial. That could have easily been us, but I'm really glad it wasn't. <laughs> 